there's a little bit of pruning I want to do on this. I just want to first mention the, the fig rust. Um, we had a pretty wet summer, so the fig rust is pretty bad this year. And there's no fungicide that's registered to use on figs to control fig rust in Florida, not organic or conventional. One thing that helps would be picking up the old leaves, but really there's so much fungus and fun fungal spores on these leaves that it's hard to imagine that helping much. And if you look, some of the little figs are actually getting the rust. So look at that. Look at that one right there. So it's Looks like we have a few fresh ones. You wanna try that and tell us how it the flavor yeah. on this one? And this is October first. So this is second harvest, correct? Well they they continually as it grows. That's what's so nice about this Japanese method. So that's where you cut it in the beginning of the year. That's where I cut it last winter. And then and then I selected this shoot. And each node had a fig. See, each node has a fig. So they, this is brown turkey, they will continue to make figs as they grow. Good flavors? That's good. Maybe I should but try it, this one. Yeah, try it. Mmm. That's really sweet, look at that. Wow. That is refreshing. So, So ideally, you wouldn't let these little side shoots grow. I'm going to let it have one fig. But you want to concentrate the growth to one single stem. So that each fruiting shoot continues to grow vigorously until it frosts. And that's how you get it to continuously produce figs. If you let it put all of its energy into making twigs, it puts its energy into making twigs, not fruit. So that's why you concentrate that growth in one vertical fruiting shoot. And sometimes when I trim them, if there's a nice fig, I like to leave it. See, I take the little fig off. I just want to leave the one nice fig that's left. So I'll leave the nice fig, cut the rest off. So this one has no figs. We're getting rid of it. Sometimes I snap them off too. Something like that. If you're really trying to do it, you probably come and look at them more frequently. Really, really. See, here's one that I pruned before, and I left the one little fig to ripen. See, I don't want the leaves. Any extraneous growth needs to be pruned off. Actually, like that one. The pruning is to focus the growth where you want it to grow. And you want it to grow the fruit producing vertical shoots. Sideways branches are just making twigs, and having this twig cluster diverts it from making fruit. And it makes the best quality fruit continuously on these vertical shoots. So leave the big fig. And now, 
your leader is the only one that can grow. So it can continue making fruit. And I've done this in greenhouses before, and I did it with my LSU purple. I had a fig every day of the year, even throughout the winter. I would just cut one back and start over when it gets too tall. So you could cut this one, and another month cut that one. And you could do this in a tropical climate, probably. Mm -hmm. Is that it? See any more? Looks pretty good. What about these right here? Yeah. This, this particular branch, you can see, is shaded by the grapefruit and the banana. And I think it's not really growing or fruiting. I think we kind of need, we're going to prune it here. And we're also going to pull these branches from the grapefruit over. So this tree is pruned in the same same style. It's just that it's it's three it's in three dimensions. It's not a linear row. Same. This is kind of how they prune the figs in the California orchards. And both here in California, we don't have to do it along the ground like they do in Japan because we're not subject to freezes. But in a cold climate, you could do this the same. It's just that your, your horizontal, your permanent arms, they need to be about one foot off the ground. So it's easy to cover them. But again, we're just cutting off everything from everywhere we don't want it to grow. So it grows where we want it to grow. One single fruiting shoot that's vertical. We pruned this one late, um, obviously. Mm -hmm. So before spring, you'll go ahead and cut these back and start a new one. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, the the tree was larger and it had more fruiting shoots, but we decided to thin it out to uh, make more space to just walk by and mow. And the tree is not convinced that this is a good idea yet. Mm -mm. It doesn't know what's going on. No, it doesn't like it. But it has a nice look and you can pick the fruits better. Yeah. And Fig rust is really hard on these trees. Have you noticed some figs are susceptible to it than other figs? Or they does it matter? Not. In this climate, they all seem susceptible. It's so rainy here in the summer. Mm -hmm. Now I've seen individual trees that are fairly fig rust free. Mm -hmm. And people get the idea that their tree must be resistant, but it really it's just that they're lucky because there's not fig rust in the area. I'm sure it probably helps having it in the full sun. Yeah, full sun. Um, some people will put out fungicide, even though that's illegal. Yeah. Especially when you get them from people that don't know better. Yeah. And then if you happen to be in a place that's um, like the beach that's drier and more windswept, that mm -hmm. helps quite a bit. And so if you had an area that's kind of kind of enclosed, that so would help not spread that fungus everywhere. 
sometimes I think that um, people's forests. You said like water oaks can spread these, correct? What's the... Can water oaks spread this type of... Uh... Well, I don't know if it's that the same fungus is growing on the, on the water oaks or if it's just the fact that the trees around the water oak, the red, any of the species of red oak, and that's just making it shadier and wetter. I don't know which is which, but I know this, that trees in the sun um, have much less fig rest. And the trees beside the beach have much less fig rust than trees in the woods, but I've seen some trees in the woods not have any fig rust. And I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm thinking it's Just location, a, a beneficial microbiome in the soil or yeah. up in or in the trees, both ways. I don't know. Protects it. I'd like to know. Well, well, I'm sure you'll learn. Well, I can figure it out. I'll let you know. See, this this is where one has really gone bad. See, it, it's branched here so many times. It was trying to make some good sized figs, and then it got branched, and now it's putting its energy into the branch into these branches and you wanted to push out to the figs yeah it's making wood instead of figs that's not what i want See, the tree wants to make wood though it doesn't know that its job is to make figs yeah make it happy that's another reason i don't like these high prune trees is i can't reach you know, i can't reach high enough to do the work i need to do you can't pick, you can't prune. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to spray, you can't spray. Tall trees are not where it's at. Bigger is not better. In this instance. Okay. Yeah. You get the idea, right? Yep. Ideally, all this should have been done a lot quicker. You know, like in August or... Uh, no, no, continually throughout the growing season. Just keep knocking them off. Before the energy is ever... Just look at all this. Yeah, it's a lot of leaf. All these carbohydrates limbs. went into producing this growth in the wrong place. And that could have been fruit. That could have been figs. It could have been growth in the right place and figs. So that's why you really got to keep on it. It's not... At least every month. Yeah. Or maybe more than that. Maybe every couple of weeks, I'm thinking. I would at least come out here and do this every couple of weeks. If I was really going to try to keep on top of it. Mm-hmm. You know. You got to spend some time with your plants. Go out there and look at them and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, Can't leave it and leave it alone. Some folks have the idea that they should be able to take care of themselves like pine trees or something that's the only thing that's realistic I almost got the fig off of that one uh -uh. This style of pruning is for ever-bearing types of common fig. It's not, um, if you had a San Pedro fig that sets fruit on the old growth, mm -hmm. this would not be the right pruning style. What, what are a few that can be pruned like this? Just about any for sale in the eastern part of the country would be okay. what they call common figs. So that would be a pro this would be appropriate. Common figs um, set fruit on new growth without pollination. San Pedro figs set fruit on last year's twigs with or without pollination on the new growth from last year's twigs. The figs have almost already started, um, so they do um, this very early crop. 
I've never actually seen one around here. I, I think they might grow here. Mm -hmm. I've just never seen one. Have you ever tried it? No. But, um, and then there's the capper figs, which are, they require the fig wasp and the male fig. And the yeah, because people them. think that all figs have a wasp in it. That's not true. No. no. It's only a certain type of fig. These figs are what they call common figs, and they're parthenocarpic. Mm -hmm. They're like uh, satsumas and navel oranges and seedless Japanese persimmons. Mm -hmm. Each flower automatically makes a seedless fruit. You don't get seeds until they get pollinated. Mm -hmm. So this will be the, the update on it. If you look at what they, what style was this one called again? It, just they, a um, they're both the Japanese style. Just different models. It's or, just or, that this one's in three dimensions. You okay, know, it's three. up, it's out, it's all around. Okay. This one's just kind of the the flat plane two dimensional version. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Same same technique and theory and. Yeah, the way you're way you're pruning it. It's just that it's three dimensional. Yeah, except one's one's good for an orchard setting <laughs> with big trees and big mm -hmm. rows, and the other one's great for training against the wall. Cool. Where okay. you need, and you could do. My grandpa did his trees like this in West Virginia, where it used to get um, 25 below. Um, he had had all of his permanent branches trained along the ground. He'd rake up the leaves cover it with leaves and tarp. He had 20 fig trees. Hmm. and They'd just make it out fun. Yeah, he protected them that way. Yeah. He's from Alabama. So he wanted his fig trees. Yeah, so if you're in a cold climate, you still can grow a fig tree. You just gotta grow it the right way. Train the permanent it. part. Yeah. Sorry. Train you're the fine. permanent part. Of close to the ground where it's warmer and easy to cover. Kind of the same thing we're doing with the mango. All right, we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.